Hello everyone, and welcome to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. Today we're playing with walnut ink on Stonehenge Aqua watercolor paper. So in the previous video, I mixed up the walnut ink and played around with some pens and a little bit of brush just to see how it looked. Now I figured I'd just jump in and create a painting with it. So my mixing wasn't too scientific, but it seems to have worked out pretty well. And I used warm water to dissolve it. And now we'll jump into it. I'll probably use this little porcelain flower tray to help water down and pull out the ink. Kind of much like Chinese brush painting where the ink will be created and then it could be watered down into separate pots. And hopefully that's showing up on camera. All right, let's get this guy out the way. We'll just go wet and wet. and just have fun. So this scene will be imaginary. It's exploring the tonal ranges of this ink and just the overall look and feel of it. I'm a big fan of um, sepia or sepia, however you want to pronounce it. We are pulling very large quantities of ink. <laughs> so let's create a little bit of a background. We might test out the paper towel, see how that helps with lifting. Yeah, we can lift back. I may need to uh, Next time, if I do this, fill the pot up higher with ink, just so I could dip directly and get that pure straight pigment. And of course, making a darker mix would help out as well. Just in case you didn't see the previous video, you could probably find walnut crystals on Amazon. I think they showed up on Joanne Fabrics um, website. I'm not sure if they still have it. There is a website that appears. Um, I think the gentleman's name is John. He sells book binding equipment. I believe he has walnut crystals for sale as well. If this is something that interests you. It does say that it's archival. I don't know if it had said if it was waterproof or light fast. Maybe it was archival and acid free. That's what the, um, that's what it said. I'm just gonna pour it right out. Build up our darker densities. And of course you could follow along with any type of ink or watercolor. You're always welcome to follow along with anything that I do. You're welcome to sign your name to it, and I would love to see your results. And I do have a Patreon down below if you'd like to support the channel. And if there's ever anything you want me to cover or address, let me know in the comments down below. I try to talk about every aspect that I'm doing, but sometimes things might get missed or concepts might want to be seen. 
definitely noticing that there's a difference between the India ink and this ink with how it applies wet and wet. The Speedball India ink was very drastic, the change. And I'm trying to figure out what would cause that. It might be the shellac binder that's in it. In a moment, we'll pause for a dry off and we'll see how everything settles. I believe there was a slight drying shift that took place in the previous experiment. So we'll watch for that. A little bit of off screen off the side. Let's see, I'm going to do a dry off and we'll play around some more. All right, so for the most part, it's dry. We did have quite a tonal shift that took place. Uh, it softened very beautifully. I did lift in some areas because I know that with ink in general, I wind up just going too much into the whole same um, tonal value all throughout. So I was trying to prevent that by doing a little bit of lifting here and other spots. But it softened and dried very close to each other. Now, the idea will be to see how our second layer acts over it. And since we're just working with one color, there's a few things we can do to try to control tonal values. One is lightening it by adding more water. Um, of course, darkening it by using a heavier concentration. You can use the paper towel to lift in spots. You can also use other scraping methods that we've explored, um, rather the card, which let's do that now just so we can see had my card there you go. Let's see how it is. With a sharp point and getting the back fills, we could get darker marks. With a rounded edge, we can dig in and try to get the white marks, but it might be a little too wet there. So we'll come back to that texture. varying brush strokes to get varying effects. I'll let this pass a little bit back here. Reflections, dark in the corner give that horizontal shape to the water area. So I'm letting this be a landmass, landmass, and water. It does seem to have, and I'm trying to use the correct words for this, does seem to have a translucent, transparent property where I had made the horizontal brush stroke and then if I come over this way, you could see through it, hopefully shows up on the camera, that horizontal brush stroke and then the vertical laying on top. So we didn't really watch for any disturbing of the underlayer, but we can see the underlayer through this layer, which is cool. values here.
So in the comments below, let me know what type of inks you like playing with. There are different walnut inks, quote unquote, on the market. Daniel Smith sells a uh, one that's already pre-liquid and it might just be a pigment mix. I'll have to look into that. I, I believe I have a little bit of that available around. Um, there is the crystal that I showed you. There is the book binder that I had mentioned that sells, I think, loose uh, walnut crystals. It is possible to make walnut ink at home. The blackened, I think the like the almost rotted husk of the outside that falls off the tree is used to, to make it. And it might just be some boiling water and those guys. You could look up iron gall ink where Iron, um, oak trees, they have like this kind of malformation type shape that takes place on them. I'm not sure if it's like a reaction to a fungus or a reaction to um, bugs, but I think if you take those and you boil them and you add like nails, like just some sort of iron source, you can create an ink through that. But that's something to Google and look into. Since we're running low on ink, let's pause it and do a dry off. All right, so we did have a lightning take place again. It has almost a storybook type look to it. I'm not sure why it's reminiscent of that. Maybe just the, um, the sepia, sepia type look. I decided that we should mix a little bit more ink and we'll do a higher concentration of the ink. Just a little bit of water. And then we'll take the number one rigger or the number four rigger and try to do a darker tonal value on top of it. So I just used a few drops of water into a strong concentration. The recommendations on the bottle, which is one level teaspoon to half cup hot water, that is probably a recommendation to get it to flow good on a dip pen and since we are not using a dip pen we shouldn't really have flow issues and the experiment is just to see really how dark we can get it what tonal range can we get over this entire piece from this ink So far, our darkest darks prior to the uh, the new mix had come through with the backfilled scrapes and almost kind of like the edge of wet and wet areas. Let's switch to our hake. The hake is just so um, water hungry. It goes through it quick. But I can imagine that this would go through, you could get through a lot of paintings. And one of the nice things is with monochromatic, two tone, uh, sorry, two color, two pigments, uh, triads. You can get a lot done. You can learn a lot and you can experiment a lot. On a 
very cheap budget. When looking at watercolor, you could have your super limited palettes. You could have your limited palette, like Ron Ranson had a seven, six, seven pigment palette. Some people will go maybe 12, some have 24, but that does financially add up. And you may be wondering, is it for you? Is it not for you? Do you want to make that investment? And monochromatic painting is a good way to explore. And also to learn tonal values, experiment with composition, compositions, etc. So we'll do one last pause for a dry off and see how dark it is. So I am going to mark this experiment a success. A few things that I want to point out. It does handle slightly different than watercolor. Uh, so try to get the darkest tonal values. Uh, I think it's possible if we keep going back and increasing our concentration of the pigment of the crystals. It does behave in that weird way where the darker edges with the wet and wet happen. But it does give a lot of textural value. I think it adds to the textural potential in those spots. So on that note, a few more layers, a few more playing around and building up the scene. This one would be very beneficial, would very benefit very much from that. Sorry. So let me sign this. We'll see how it looks underneath the mat. I hope you enjoyed. I have to clean this ink off of everything. Our mat go right here. Let's make some space. Glad I finally got a chance to use that inkwell. And here we go. Nice, warm, rich brown. I hope you all enjoy. Have a great day.